Um, if uh, Mr. Brock wants to not silence the witnesses, why doesn't he just let yeah, us That's vote not a point of order, Mr. Coteau. Go ahead, Mr. Oh, Brock. Sorry. So, nice try, Mr. Coteau, but that's, that's the point. Mr. Brock, go ahead. Well, I have much to say. Uh, first, I want to uh, deeply apologize to both of our witnesses who are here to continue a discussion and an examination and review of a very serious issue. As I identified, Ms. Samanaganis, you traveled over five hours from Northern Ontario to be here in person. My colleague, Mr. Genuis, said how disappointing this maneuver was. He used softer language than I, than I intend on using. I find it disgusting. I find it disrespectful. And a social justice issue such as this deserves the appropriate amount of time. Now, to the individuals you've heard on Zoom, some of my colleagues, the Liberal colleagues from British Columbia, for instance, talk about break weeks. And we all enjoy break weeks from time to time. But the nice thing about being a parliamentarian and, and having a hybrid format such as this, where people can appear in person and appear on screen, is you can talk and walk, you can talk and chew gum at the same time. For instance, this morning, this meeting started at 12 noon. I was engaging with constituents this morning in my riding by telephone and by Zoom. I intend on doing the very same thing before I leave Ottawa. And when I return to my riding, I'll be doing the same thing. You don't often hear that from, from the Liberal colleagues because what has been happening here for the better part of two years that we've been examining one scandal after another is we see a pattern of shutting down uncomfortable, difficult conversations. This Prime Minister, and I know you don't want to be political, but I certainly can, has the reputation of being the only Prime Minister in the history of this country to have been found guilty not once, but twice of ethical violations. Point of order. Ministers Sorry, Mr. Brock, in his cabinet. Or, sorry, Mr. Brock, excuse me. Go ahead uh, on your point of order. I'd just like to call into question the relevance of what uh, Mr. Brock is putting forward right now. Oh, I intend on getting there, Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Brock. The Prime Minister set an example of unethical governance and an unethical way of being a steward of taxpayer monies. After he was found guilty twice, various ministers of his cabinet have been found guilty. Other members of his backbench have been found guilty of ethical violations. So we see a pattern that I have seen in this particular committee. I have seen at public accounts, another parliamentary committee, I have seen at justice, I have seen at ethics. To give you a couple of examples to both witnesses, we had the Auditor General who finally took an interest in conducting an audit of the ArriveCan scandal. I referenced that in the first question Point I put order. to you. Yes, Ms. Atwin. Mr. Chair, we're debating a motion about you showing respect and giving notice for meetings. This has nothing to do with what Mr. Brock is going off about right now, and I would just really like for your ruling on relevance. We always allow wide latitude in the discussions. Uh, I think every one of you has been called on uh, relevance on um, previous motions. I'm sure Mr. Brock will get to it. Go ahead, Mr. Brock. Absolutely. And I to, uh, to Ms. Atwin and the rest of her Liberal colleagues, I informed you at the outset, this is going to be lengthy and I will get to relevancy, but it will be on my time, Ms. Atwin, certainly not yours or any member of your, of your party. So to give you an example of the disrespect uh, shown by the Liberal Party 
and its members and the NDP, which at that point was in a coalition with the Liberal government. And hypocrisy is just abundant when we're talking about the NDP party because they talk a tough game in the House. They talk tough in social media point about order, how Mr. difficult. Yeah, Mr. Coteau, um, you um, again, we might have an issue with your mic, so... Uh, uh, can I try? Yeah, I was going to say try, but don't go too fast, and I'll interrupt you if we're having an issue, but go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll wait for a signal yeah. from our interpreters. Th thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm new to the committee, but I just want to make sure if we just vote on this procedural vote quickly, we can get back to the witnesses, right? We could be back to the witnesses after a vote in two minutes. If we just stop debating and deal Are with the motion, okay? correct? Let me just see if the translation's working everything. Oh, we're okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really a point of order, but uh, yes, okay. if, if they're... I just, um, you know, the, just so the witnesses know that if we actually stop debating this procedural item and voted yeah. on it, we could actually get back if to it right was, away. If it was withdrawn, Thank we could you. get back to right away. If it was voted on, we'd get back to right away. So both ways, yes. Go ahead, Mr. Brock. So to the witnesses here, I wanted to give you a couple of examples of similar situations that you've just experienced where they want to silence witnesses. The Arrive Can scandal, when it first gained speed, the Auditor General was conducting an audit. She was asked to attend a committee to give us an update on the audit. It was then revealed that the RCMP had started an investigation. I had put a question to the Auditor General about when she was informed that the RCMP had started their investigation. And her response was, I read it in the newspaper just like everybody else. And I expressed my deep concern and, and disgust that the Liberal government did not see fit to inform the Auditor General about this important fact. The moment I asked that question, my time was up. It went to a Liberal member who moved to adjourn the committee. So she literally spoke for maybe 10 minutes and a two-hour meeting had collapsed. Similarly, other issues, RCMP commissioner attends various committees. Again, they didn't like the line of questioning. We were put to the RCMP commissioner. They moved to shut down. So it really surprised me at the timing of this particular motion, given that one Liberal member actually asked relevant questions and gave me the impression that all members here, including the government, including the NDP, including the Bloc, who voted in favour of ruling against the chair in this particular motion, uh, wanted to sidestep the hearing of crucial evidence. So I, I assure you, ma'am, that regardless of what decision is made today, I will ensure that you're not silenced. I will ensure that the representatives of Plato would not be silenced. I will ensure that any Indigenous representative or that they be in person or representing an organization, will never be silenced when it comes to this particular corruption and mismanagement of government, of, of taxpayer funds. Point of order. As I indicated to you, this is over a billion right. dollars sorry, every Brock, year. Got, uh, I'm sorry, I did not see who's point of order. Uh, Michael Koto online. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Koto. Um, if uh, Mr. Brock wants to not silence the witnesses, why doesn't he just let yeah, us That's vote not a point of order, Mr. Coteau. Go ahead, Mr. Oh, sorry. Brock. So, nice try, Mr. Coteau, but that's, that's the point and that's the message I want to deliver to you, that these type of procedural shenanigans ought not to happen, particularly when we're dealing with a sensitive issue such as this. So I assure you, you will have an opportunity of fully participating in this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Chair.